Okay, let's study the Word of God. And since Easter is fast approaching, so we need to study uh, several things about the Lord Jesus Christ. And our series for today is Who is Jesus? Who is Jesus? So up until today, there's still a lot of people, they don't acknowledge Jesus. Sometimes they know about the name of Jesus, but they have no broad understanding about who Jesus Christ is in their lives. Napoleon Bonaparte, Alexander the Great, Caesar, these are great emperors who founded their, their uh, empires. And today, they're all gone. But Jesus Christ, who founded Christianity, they call that also as empire. He founded it upon the foundation of love. And to this very day, millions are still willing to die for Christ. So Jesus Christ was more than a man. Now, as a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, are you willing to die for him? I'm still wondering why the disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ, they are willing to give their lives for Christ during the first uh, establishment of the church or the New Testament church. In several passages in the Bible, we can see so many titles of the Lord Jesus Christ. And today, we are going to study Jesus, the Son of Man. Now, if you have your Bible, in the book of Matthew, chapter 16, verse 13 says, When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? So they said, some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. So take note, Jesus, in these particular verses, revealed two titles, okay? He asked that question, who do men say that I, the son of man? He's using the title son of man. And then when Peter answered, he used this title. Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. So I know that all of you knows that Christ is not the last name of Jesus. This it's not the surname of Jesus, okay? That's the title of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, so Son of Man and Son of God. But today we are going to discuss first Son of Man, and then next week, Son of God. And there are many titles also of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, in the Old Testament, there was a prophecy when God used Daniel and he said like this, In my vision at night, I look and there before me was one like a son of man. Coming with the clouds of heaven, he approached the ancient of days and was led into his presence. He was given authority, glory, and sovereign power. All peoples, nations, and men of every language worship him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that will not pass away, and his kingdom is one that will never be destroyed. It was a prophetic message, a vision received by Daniel, that someday the Son of Man will come. And this Son of Man will approach the Ancient of Days, another title for our Lord Jesus Christ, and was led into his presence. He was given authority, glory, and sovereign power, all peoples, nations, and men. There is no other person on this planet Earth that fit to that prophecy except the Lord Jesus Christ. And later you will see. So the word Son of Man was used 88 times pertaining to our Lord Jesus Christ. 
Another one in the Old Testament, if you are familiar with Ezekiel, Ezekiel was mentioned as son of man by God himself 93 times. But Ezekiel was mentioned only as human being, not as Savior, not as God, not as a coming king, but simply calling Ezekiel a human being. But when, 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 when Jesus came and he was called a son of man, you will see in different parts of the Bible, especially in the New Testament, that Jesus is more than a human being. Jesus was fully God, 100% God and 100% human being. And that's why the Bible is very clear in 1 John chapter 4, verse 2. This is how you can recognize the Spirit of God. Every spirit that acknowledges that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. So we believe that Jesus Christ is not just human being. He is God who became human. All right? Now, several passages in the Bible, and since we don't have enough time to explain everything, I'm going to give you at least eight reasons why he became, or why he was called son of man, or, and including his purposes and, and his mission regarding uh, coming here on this planet earth. Matthew chapter 9, beginning verse 1, it says like this, Jesus stepped into a boat, crossed over and came to his own town. Some men brought to him a paralyzed man lying on a mat. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the man, Take heart, son, your sins are forgiven. At this, some of the teachers of the law said to themselves, this fellow is blaspheming. Why he said, these religious people, they accused Jesus of blasphemy. Not because he healed somebody, but because he forgave somebody. And for them, they understood, once a person forgives the sin of one person, it means you are claiming that you are God. Because that sin that he is talking about is not just, you know, a sin that, uh, a sin of uh, gossiping, a sin of uh, lying. But this is a kind of sin that can restore, or a sin that will uh, bring us into hell, and the forgiveness that can restore us into the fellowship of God. And anybody who forgives sin like what Jesus did, is claiming to be God. That's why they said, blasphemy. Now, knowing their thoughts, so Jesus said, why do you entertain evil thoughts in your hearts? Okay, again, in this particular verse, Jesus now is demonstrating that he is not just a human being. He knew the thoughts. Of those people and he knew what's inside of their hearts only God can do that only God can do that which is easier to say your sins are forgiven or to say get up and walk but I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins so the Son of Man has the authority to forgive sins so he said to the paralyzed man get up Take your mat and go home. Then the man got up and went home. Oh, that's powerful, amen? So you will notice Jesus used the title Son of Man to forgive sin and perform miracle at the same time. So if Jesus is the Son of God, why he used the title Son of Man? So what does Son of Man pertaining to? So what is the importance of using the Son of Man? What is the relevance of this to all of us? 
So there is no contradiction, my friend, in Jesus using as a son of man and being son of God. There are not, these are not two persons, but two natures, human and divine, conjoined in one person. Son of man and son of God. So next time, we will focus on Jesus next week as the son of God. But today, let us focus on Jesus as the son of man. So when Mary gave birth through the power of the Holy Spirit, so they knew because of the revelation of the, Holy, of the angels of the Lord that the person inside her womb is the Messiah, Emmanuel, the Savior of the world. And that's the big question. Why he called himself Son of Man? What is the significance or importance by saying this to all of us? So as we examine the scripture, you will see the revelation that reveals the praise Son of Man. It carries broad significance. So the Son of Man is reference to Jesus' humanity. But it is not a denial of Jesus' divinity. It doesn't mean when he was, when he was being called a son of man, he is not God. By becoming a man, Jesus did not cease being God. Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 to 11, he set aside his divinity and came to this earth as human being. He humbled himself. And then next week, we are going to discuss that. So when Jesus called himself Son of Man, he was making a clear reference to his identity as the promised Messiah. But the praise Son of Man also refers to the fact that Jesus shares in our humanity. Okay? That he was truly a human being. So, in this particular situation, the first thing we, we notice here is this. Jesus, the Son of Man, has the power to forgive sin. There is no other one who can forgive our sin but the Lord. Amen? And that's the reason why we came here. All of us are sinners and come short of the glory of God. And any sinner will reap the consequences of his or her sin. And that's the reason why Jesus Christ came here to forgive our sins. So, Son of Man indicates that Jesus is the Messiah and that He is truly a human being. So, in that particular passage that we just read, Jesus, as Son of Man, has the power to forgive sin. That's why we are so thankful to God. Amen? I cannot forgive you in order for you to go to heaven. Maybe I can forgive you if you lie to me. But I cannot forgive you in the sense that by means of giving you forgiveness, you will go to heaven. No. But Jesus Christ is different. When He forgave us our sins, it only means... Jesus is giving you an access to go to heaven. Hello, are you with me? Jesus is giving you an access to have relationship with the Father. So all of us are sinners. And our sin became a huge blockage in order for us not to have relationship with God. But we thank God Jesus Christ became man in order for us to have access to the Father by giving us the forgiveness of our sins. Now, the other one is, Jesus, the Son of Man, has the power to heal. He's a miracle worker. Amen? The Bible says, But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. So he said to the paralyzed man, Get up! Take your mat and go home. Then the man got up and went home and they were all amazed. First time in the history of those people, maybe in that particular village, they were amazed, they were shocked when Jesus Christ not only forgave the sin of that person, but even healed that person. 
Because in their mind, they knew that only God can do that. Paralyzed. At that time, there's no medicine available for a paralyzed person. But Jesus Christ became a healer for that person. Jesus, the Son of Man, has the power to heal. And we still believe that even today, Jesus has the power to heal. Amen? And He can still heal us. See, healing and forgiving of sins. Just in one particular situation and in many uh, stories in the New Testament. Forgiving of sins and healing. These two are very important. There are some people, they're just asking for God's healing without receiving the forgiveness of God from their sins. But Jesus was different. He forgave the sin. And then because there are some religious people having doubts and, and, and questions in their minds, Jesus healed also the guy. So in, in other words, Jesus is demonstrating or telling them that I am more than a human being. That I am your only hope. And there's no other one. That I am... The God who can forgive your sin and the God who can heal you. He is still doing the same until today. Amen? Praise God. Let's give all a clap of praise. Amen. The third one is Jesus, the Son of Man, is Lord of the Sabbath. For the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. Maybe somehow, someday we will discuss that and explore the importance of Sabbath. So we are not Jewish people. Anybody here? Okay. We are composed of different ethnicity from the Philippines, but we're not Jew. Okay. Until today, the Jews are still worshiping God uh, using the Sabbath day starting from sunset of Friday up to sunset of Saturday. And there are some people, they, they don't worship Sunday, they worship Saturday. Even though they are not Jews, they worship Saturday. Because they said that we have, they have to follow the, the, the Sabbath day. So why, why we worship Sunday? Have you ever asked that question? Why not Sabbath? Okay, we will explore that next time, okay? But let me give you some insight about this. The Son of Man, or the Lord Jesus Christ, is the Lord of the Sabbath. If you are the Lord of something, you have all the power to do anything. Amen? And it is very clear from the Bible that don't allow those people to judge you if you are worshiping different days, that's in Colossians chapter 2, verse 16. Even Sabbath days. Because once you have Jesus Christ in your heart, you have freedom. Freedom to worship the Lord. Now, you will see in many verses in the Bible that the first church, the New Testament church, the believers in the New Testament church, worship the Lord during first day of the week. And what is the first day of the week? Sunday. It's not Monday, it's Sunday. Why we worship God during Sundays? Because our Sundays is a celebration that Jesus Christ is no longer dead. He is alive. Amen. Amen. We worship the Lord during Sundays because even the believers in the New Testament worship the Lord during the first day of the week. And that is our Sabbath. Now, if God permits, somehow, someday, we can have our Saturday service, uh, that will be good too. You know? Amen. You, will you will be like a... Sabbath day worshiper. 
All right? Amen? So Jesus, the Son of Man, is Lord of the Sabbath. So He owned it. So the Sabbath was made for us, not for us to the Sabbath. And that's the reason why the Lord Jesus Christ is the Lord of the Sabbath. In other words, we can worship now the Lord anywhere, anytime. While you are driving, you can worship the Lord. Sabbath literally means you have to rest. Do you know worshiping God is also resting in His presence? Amen. It's not R.I.P. It's, it's different, okay? <laughs> rest in peace. But here is resting with peace in the presence of God. And the Bible says God gave you six days to work plus overtime. But the seventh day is for the Lord. Amen? So Jesus asked Lord of the Sabbath, we need to worship Him and fellowship with Him in His presence. That's why the Bible is very clear when two or three gather together in His name, He is in the midst of them. So that's why we can worship God anywhere. We can worship God during Wednesday. We have worship uh, during Wednesday here. We can worship God in our Bible study. Sometimes your Bible study is every other Thursday or Friday or Monday or Tuesday. Or if you, have, if you are having your own Bible study with your family, that's your resting place in the presence of God. Putting out your heart before the Lord. Thank God Jesus is the Lord of the Sabbath. Number four is, Jesus the Son of Man came here to serve. The Bible is very clear. The Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. The greatest servant of all, the master of the universe, the creator of the heavens and the earth is our great servant. Amen? Amen. Up to what extent he is willing to serve? To the extent of giving his life. How many of you love to serve the Lord? Are you willing to give your life to God? Sure? Okay, Brad. Next Sunday, this is your service. Come in the church. You know, don't be late. <laughs> If we are willing to serve God, we must be committed to Him and give our best for Him. Amen? Jesus Christ, when He served the Father and served us, He gave His best, even His life. So Jesus, the Son of Man, came here to serve us, to serve the Father, and to give His life as a ransom for many. So we are so thankful to God because Jesus is a servant. And it is our prayer that everybody will become a servant. Servant of God. Amen? Hello, are you with me? And the other one is this. Jesus, the Son of Man, came to seek and save the lost. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. Who are the lost? We are all lost. No one is righteous, Romans 3.10. No one is righteous, no, not even one. We are all sinners before the eyes of God. We come short of the glory of God. And the consequence of our sins is eternal death. And we thank God because the Father sent His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. His primary mission, His primary purpose is to seek and save the lost. That's why we, He found us. Amen? He found us. He keep looking to His people. And once we have that relationship with Him, now we became part of the family of God. So Jesus, the Son of Man, came to seek and save the lost. We are all lost.
But now that we have Jesus, we are no longer lost. So there is, in Tagalog, okay, tayo po lahat ay nawawala. The problem sometimes is, we are not just lost. We are nandila lamang tayo nawawala. Ang iba ay nagwawala. So that's why Jesus Christ came here to seek and save the lost, the weird, and the wild. And we thank God for that. Amen. Because He sought us and He found us. And He keep chasing us, changing us. Amen. Are you not happy that Jesus Christ he didn't give up on you. He keep pursuing you until such a time you surrender everything to God. You keep running away. Keep running away. You know? I remember one of my friends when he was one of my classmates in Piatti University where he first heard the gospel of Jesus and he said, ah, I don't like it, you know. There are a bunch of people who are crazy out of their mind, you know. You know I, I don't like it. So, in other words, every time we share the Word of God, He closed the door. But we still uh, have communication. We're still friends. And then, after, after those years, He went to uh, their province and married a girlfriend. Then in their province... The neighbor of his wife is a church, a Christian church. And then he heard again the word of God. Why these guys are so noisy and they keep sharing the word of God? You know, in the Philippines, they can, they can put all kinds of sound system, you know. <laughs> they don't care if the neighbors are sleeping. You know, sometimes they, uh, as long as we are happy doing our things, you know, and preaching the gospel, so, the guy, my friend, he said, let's go to Manila. Let's transfer. I don't like these guys, you know. Oh, I don't like going to Manila, the wife said. Let's go to the city, Southern Park. Okay, they went to the city. And then, he applied in his job where he was accepted. Then, during lunch, there is Bible study in his office. And he said, my goodness, why these people are following me every, everywhere I go? And then he resigned after several months. And he went to Manila. And it so happened in Manila, a friend of his wife, also a Christian, helping him or them to look for an apartment. And then when they saw an apartment, they said, I like this. The, the, the place is nice and the place is good, you know. And then it's a private uh, village. But in the clubhouse, there's also a Christian service. And he loved to go to gym. But before he uh, start doing his uh, exercise, you know, there is always a service during Sunday. Oh, my goodness, what's happening? And then he applied to abroad, Saudi Arabia. <laughs> and in Saudi Arabia, all of, most of his co-employees are JRM people. <laughs> and he said, I don't like this place. So he transferred to Dubai. He went there. You know, supervisor is also our member. <laughs> and he kept changing his place until he went to Abu Dhabi. And also we have another church there. And I thank God he surrendered his life to the Lord. You may try to escape from one place to another. If God is calling you, you cannot escape God's calling. 
Jesus, the Son of Man, came to seek and save the lost. For the Son of Man came to seek and save the lost. The other one is, Jesus, the Son of Man, must suffer, die, and rose again. Luke chapter 9, verse 22 says, And he said, The Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law, and he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. It was all fulfilled in the life of the Lord Jesus Christ. He suffered, he died, but he, he didn't stay there inside the cave. He rose again from the dead. The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Imagine all the religious personalities in the world. Muhammad founded Islam. He lived and died and is still dead. Martin Luther founded Protestantism. He lived and died and is still dead. Buddha of Buddhism, he lived and died and still dead. Manalo of Iglesia ni Cristo, he lived and died and still dead. And all personalities all over the world with regards to their religious affiliation, they live and die and still dead. But Jesus Christ of the Bible, he lived and died and rose again. Yeah. That's why we need to put our trust in the Lord. Amen? The other one is Jesus, the Son of Man, will return with power. Remember in Daniel chapter 7, the one that we just read earlier? The Bible says, Jesus said to him, the high priest, It is as you said, nevertheless, I say to you hereafter, you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Church, Jesus is coming again. So when Jesus was asked by the high priest whether he was the Son of God, he responded affirmatively, declaring that he was the Son of Man who would come in power and great glory. This indicated that Jesus himself used the praise Son of Man to indicate his divinity as the Son of God. That he is more than a man. That he is God who came in the flesh. That's why the Bible declared, Then will appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven and then all the peoples of the earth will mourn when they see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Jesus Christ, the Son of Man, will come again with power and great glory. And those who rejected Him, those unbelievers who keep running away from God, see, look, it's going to happen. They will mourn when they see the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Those who are ready, those who are prepared, they will be happy in the presence of the Lord. Amen? So, in this passage, Jesus is quoting also Daniel chapter 7, verse 13, where the Messiah is described as the Ancient of Days, a praise used to indicate His divinity or His deity. So, Jesus, the Son of Man, will come again. will return with power. And we need to be ready. Amen? And not only that, Jesus, the Son of Man, will give rewards. Hallelujah. You need to be excited. He's coming again. For the Son of Man is going to come in His Father's glory with His angels. Amen? And then He will reward each person according to what they have done. God is, is a rewarder. So God knows all the things that we have, that we are doing, all our sacrifices, everything. 
The Son of Man is coming. And then He will reward each person, everyone, according to what they have done. John chapter 3, verse 13 says, No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. That's why, if there are some people telling you Jesus Christ is just human, just human being, forget it. Jesus is more than a human being. Amen? He is the Son of God who came into this world. 100% divine, 100% human. Because the only one who can forgive us from all of our sin is no other than but the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ. So church, if Jesus is coming again, and if Jesus, the Son of Man, will give, will give us rewards, are we ready for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ? We need to be ready. Do we have the forgiveness of all of our sins? Jesus is the only one who, for, who can forgive us from all of our sins. Nobody can forgive us except the Lord Jesus Christ. Nobody died on the cross except the Lord Jesus Christ. Nobody rose again from the dead except the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's why we are so thankful to the Lord. And next week you will see how the Lord still up until today, it's really hard for them to accept Jesus as Son of God. Because once Jesus declared that He is the Son of God, it means He is God. And people are angry with that. They don't like it. They don't accept it. But here, Jesus is the Son of Man. You cannot separate His divinity and His humanity. He is the same yesterday and today and forever. Amen. Let's give the Lord a clap of praise. Shall we all stand?